Dan Daly State Farm Insurance, Brian Moore Construction, Southern Ohio Smiles, the Jackson County Health Department Search Program, and Hothead Burrito. And now let's go live to Pete Wilson for every pitch of the entire game live from Sparky Haller Field on 105.3 FM and AM 1330 WYPC. This is Pete Wilson, and welcome to Dick Sparky Haller Field, where the Ironmen are about ready to uh, take on the Hillsborough Indians in a Frontier Athletic Conference game. The Ironmen, as a matter of fact, are in the field right now, so we're not very far away. Uh, Hillsborough comes in uh, with an 0-9 record, very uncharacteristic for what we've seen from that baseball program in recent years. It wasn't too long ago that they either won or shared the FAC championship, knocked Jackson out of a uh, good Jackson team out of the tournament one year. Uh, Jackson is 7-4, and four, coming off a doubleheader split over at the VA, lost to Unioto 6-5, defeated Lynchburg Clay later uh, that day 3-2. And uh, Dan Jackson, most importantly, I know 7-4, uh, and four, Coach McGraw would like to be a little better than that because of the high expectations, but... 2-0 and in the FAC so far. Well, let's be honest, 7-4, and four, it's not where they'd want to be. But you know what? Three of the four losses are one-run games. He's so close. We're being so close. He's just got to find a way to win those close ones. But the big thing is you win all your league games. And we started off last week with a couple wins over Greenfield. Impressive wins, 12-2 to two on back-to-back -back nights uh, last week during pretty bad weather week, actually. But uh, Ironman did get in those two games, and they got in the, the doubleheader on Saturday. Saturday, so we're ready to go today. Tucker Williams on the mound today for the Ironman and the all-important one. When you're playing Hillsboro and you're complaining back-to-back -back nights, you have to win the game on your home turf. Right, absolutely important. Uh, I know uh, Jackson uh, certainly considered one of the favorites, if not the favorite going into the league based on the returning players, based on the fact that last year's champion Washington Courthouse graduated a lot of seniors. And so, you know, a little bit of pressure on this Jackson team. But, uh, you know, uh, this is one definitely, uh, Dan, you're right, that they want to get here at home against the Hillsborough team that has struggled this year and Jackson also on the home turf as well. You mentioned how good Hillsborough was. I think it was two years ago, Pete Wilson, they had an ace on the mound, were able to beat us in the sectional. I think we split with them during the regular season. But Hillsborough is young, a lot of sophomores in the lineups tonight. So it's like every team, sometimes you have to kind of start over from scratch. Tucker Williams throws the first pitch, and it is fouled away by the Hillsborough leadoff hitter. That is shortstop Zach Brown. You can probably hear a little breeze in the air. The wind looks like it's blown from left to right field at the moment. Next pitch from Tucker is a curveball. Catches the inside corner for strike two. Uh, Jackson, uh, uh, both, of these both of these teams uh, will be playing in warm weather, 82 degrees. And as Dan mentioned, uh, the wind kicking up a good bit right now. Partly cloudy skies. Next pitch. Williams is up high, ball one. One ball and two strikes. Tucker has turned into, uh, you know, one of the main starting pitchers for the Ironman this year as a junior, along with Gavin Jones. Those have been the two players that have gone uh, in, the, uh, in the conference game so far, although this is only the third one. And Brown swings and misses. If that pitch was in on his fists, and he didn't get a very good swing at it. And the first batter for Hillsborough goes down on a strikeout. Obviously have a lot of confidence in Tucker. He has just gotten better every year. This is his junior season on the mound, and he is one of the aces, no doubt about it. Nate Lane, the left fielder, comes up, and he does bat from the left-hand side. Armin will in. travel all the way to Hillsboro tomorrow night, Pete Wilson, and they'll have the luxury of either having Gavin Jones or Ramey Wyant to go on the mound. There's a fastball right down the heart of the plate for strike one. One ball and one strike. Yeah, Jackson's pitching deep. Gavin Jones, by the way, not in the lineup tonight. Precautionary, I think he is available. So uh, let's hope if he d is able to get some rest tonight, he's ready to go full go on the road. I know he would probably be the pitcher of choice if he's able. Swing and a miss by Lane, so the count goes to one ball and two strikes. Pitcher versus pitcher right now. Lane will be the starter for Hillsboro. And a swing and a miss as uh, Lane was uh, overpowered on that fastball. Didn't get a good swing at it. And uh, two players up, two players down, both on the strikeout route. Williams taking care of business very quickly so far. Here is Walker Pence, the catcher for Hillsboro. Jackson defense, uh, pretty much what you would expect except for the fact that Gavin Jones is not in the lineup. That's a ball one down low. Ramey Wyant is over at first base. That's normally where Gavin would be if he's not pitching. But then a very familiar defensive alignment. 
Boston Campbell at second, Ryan Simons at short, Easton McGraw down at third. And the outfield from left to right is Nolan Johnson, Cade Wolford, and Bodie Wolford. Noah Ernst, of course, behind the plate. And that pitch looks like a nice pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Count goes to one ball and one strike. Williams throwing mostly fastballs and in the strike zone so far. All business. Here is your 1-1 one, one pitch. One ball and two strikes. Here's another pitch from Tucker coming. And there's a ground ball right at Easton McGraw. He got it on the friendly bounce over to first. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for Tucker Williams here in the first for Hillsborough. They go down quickly. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base after the first half inning of play. The Hillsborough Indians zero. The Jackson Iron Men coming to bat. You are listening to Jackson Iron Men Baseball on Fox Sports 1330 AM and 105.3 FM. Your sanctuary. It's pajamas at noon and cookies in the oven. It's fingerprints on the wall and heights measured in a doorway. It's the one place in the world that you know better than anyone else. Vinton County National Bank wants to help you build that messy, wonderful, cherished place where you can live a life you love for years to come. That's our promise. VCNB, here for you now, here for your future. Visit vcnbfamily.bank for our construction special. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Financial advisor Chad Niddle of Edward Jones is a proud sponsor of Cincinnati Reds Baseball on 97 Country the Bull, WCJO. I'm Chad Niddle, your Jackson Edward Jones financial advisor. I believe feeling rich is less about reaching a magic number and more about living life on your terms with financial strategies that help support a life you love. Because the key to being rich is knowing what counts. So contact me today at 740-286-4872 and let's find your rich. Edward Jones, member of Securities Investor Protection Corp. We go to the bottom You're half of the first Jackson inning. Ironman baseball on Fox Sports 105.3 FM and AM 1330 WYPC Jackson. We go to the bottom half of the first inning, and uh, Jackson comes up after a quick 1-2-3 inning uh, by pitcher Tucker Williams against Hillsboro uh, in the top half of the inning. And a familiar lineup for Jackson. A couple little tweaks in there because of some different personnel and one little shift in the lineup. We'll tell you about it. But leading off, very familiar figure, senior Boston Campbell, the second baseman. Ryan Simons will follow him at shortstop. Then Nolan Johnson moving from the fourth spot into the three spot in the lineup in left field. Just fouled down the line. Right fielder was kind of shifted over into uh, right center, had too far to go and wasn't able to get it. So Campbell swings on the first pitch and uh, a foul pop falls harmlessly. About uh, three feet foul and we'll do it again. You know, we talked about Jackson's four losses, three of them being of the one run variety. They've been kind of heartbreakers, but the second game of the doubleheader on Saturday, they did win a one run game. So maybe they are getting those things corrected. We're approaching the midway part in this season already, which is hard to believe. That pitch was high and inside to Campbell. One ball and one strike. Yes, it's moving quickly. We've lost some games due to weather, but still got an 11 already. That pitch is high and inside for ball two. Two balls and one strike to Boston Campbell. I talked with Coach McGraw very uh, briefly before the game. He says, you know, you just got to learn to close it out. The Unioto Sherman scored two runs in the bottom of the seventh to beat them six to five. So that was a tough, tough loss. Well, the Pick North loss was a tough one. The Ironman losing 1-0 to Wheelersburg, one of the very top teams in all of Southeast Ohio. They've all been tough ones. They've been to good teams. That last pitch to Campbell was over the outside corner for strike two. Here comes your 2-2 pitch. And Campbell just stays alive as he fouls uh, another pitch that was about the same place as the last one. Back at the screen our way. Two balls and two strikes. Ironman will, as Dan said, be at Hillsboro again tomorrow night as it is a uh, you know, back-to-back FAC schedule this year you play a team on one night and there's a pop-up into left that field. might find it's, a spot it's over the shortstop's head and the shortstop ranging back a is able to get uh, make a nice over the shoulder catch there dan that was um the shortstop of uh, zach brown with that play wasn't hit hard but over the shorts it's the shortstop sophomore shortstop to the iron man Coach McGraw very pleased with the pitching so far, including in the doubleheader. I think he would like to see a few more runs. Pitches down low and away for ball one. That was, a, that was the most obvious statement I've heard. I think every baseball coach would like to see a few more, wouldn't they? A few more. Well, a one few more, more than the opposition. That's usually the barometer if you're not scoring enough runs. And the pitching has been uh, special.
spectacular so far in there for a called strike last week to, last week with the the twin bill win over greenfield scored 12 runs each game but that second game that we had on radio we scored 12 runs pete on only really six hits but a lot of walks a lot of miscues and uh ironman took advantage of them simons fouls it out of play to Coach McGraw said that Unioto has an excellent team as they usually do. He, he feels that Unioto is uh, the same caliber of, as his team. That pitch to Simons is inside for ball two. two probably two. Wheelersburg. You can throw them all in a hat, and they're all some of the top teams in the area. And he does make a concerted attempt to schedule tough non-conference games, and that's going to make a difference in how well you do. It's hard to beat them all. Here's your 2-2 pitch. Just off the outside corner for ball three. Pitcher there took a long look in, wanted that one. Simons with a good eye, just outside. Three balls and two strikes to Simons. Here in the bottom half of the first, no score, nobody on, one out. 3-2 pitch to Simons. Good hit. Ground ball up the middle by the shortstop in the center field. Simons hit it on the ground, but in the right place, right up the middle, and he becomes Jackson's first base runner and has the first hit of the game for either team. Excellent timing on that one, right up the middle. Shot it right past the pitcher and into center field. Here is Nolan Johnson, the left fielder. See if Coach McGraw wants to get base runners moving here or not. Simon's an outstanding base runner, good quickness. He makes it very clear that Jackson is going to be very aggressive on the base pass, and he certainly is going to do that till he finds out how well Hillsboro defenses against that. And the catcher with a quick throw down there and just safe at first base is Simons. Kind of a delayed throw, and Simons had to hurry back in to be safe. The catcher threw a strike to the first baseman and almost got Ryan. Ryan's quickness got him back. He's kind of leaning the other direction. From the stretch here at the pitch, Simons is running. Catcher, catcher caught the ball, but then uh, kind of double pumped, and that was really all Simons needed. He had an excellent jump as it was, Dan. I don't think they were going to get him. They weren't going to get him. Catcher couldn't quite. He kind of bobbled it getting it out of his glove, so it made it pretty easy for Ryan. He did slide, but he was in there easily. Right. When he threw it down there, it was a good, hard throw, a little bit offline and high, and as we said, he double pumped, so Simons was in there easily with a stolen base. Here's your 1-1 pitch to Nolan Johnson. Simons now at second. And there is a ground ball just fouled down the first baseline. Strike two, one ball and two strikes. First baseman kind of hugging the bag there. He would have had a chance at that play if it was in play. Catcher Noah Ernst on deck. Big hole right now on the right side of the infield with the runner on second and the first baseman close to the bag. Here's your one-two pitch. And there is a ground ball on the other side of the diamond this time by Josh McGraw down there in the third base coaching bag. Count remains one ball and two strikes. Big night tonight down here on Huron Street. The uh, track team, there's a track meet over here right behind the Sparky Howler, the new the new scoreboard, the Sparky Howler field scoreboard. Here's your one-two pitch to Nolan Johnson, and it's fouled back. Count remains one ball and two strikes. When we have a baseball game here and a track meet on the other side of the fence, a lot of parking, activity going Parking's on. precious. That's right, absolutely. Look over there at the parking lot for the middle school. It's filled up. and uh, It is. What a beautiful night to be out watching something or other whether it be baseball or the track meet. Here's your one-two pitch again. Wow. And that hit Johnson in the back, and he is going to go down to first base on the hit by pitch. Nolan sort of turned into that one. I'll tell you, that's, there's a little bit of toughness there to take that shot in the middle of the back like he did. Right, it's like you didn't know which way to turn there a little bit. It was so inside. But Nolan gets on base. Here's this may Nolan. be to warn Hillsboro people that it's going to be tough to tackle him here in the fall also. Uh, oh, yeah. I think they may already know that. They might know that. Here is Noah Ernst, the catcher. Uh, as we said, Nolan was four in the lineup. Ernst was three. They switched him around. Ernst now in the four hole, the cleanup hole. And oh, a, a shot. Deep fly to left field. It's going to be over the left fielder's head and bounce up against the wall. Simons is going to score easily. Here's Nolan Johnson in the third. He'll stop there, and Ernst trots into second with a double. And he scolded that one, Dan. Left fielder was playing deep, but it was clearly over his head. 
And uh, on, on one bounce, it hit the wall, and a RBI double for Noah Ernst puts the Ironman on the scoreboard. They headed right at the base of the fence, but headed hard enough. The left fielder had no opportunity to even get near it. So great, great shot there by our cleanup hitter. And we still have runners now on second and third, one out. Or Xander Urban, the, the designated hitter in the number five hole. Pitches inside, ball one from the pitcher. That is Nate Lane out there. Hillsboro trying to avoid a big inning. Jackson trying to make a big inning. That Pitch one's is high and inside, ball two. First base is open, but there's still just one out. Count to Xander Urban is 2-0. Oh. I'm sure he's free to swing. 2-0 pitch right down the heart of the plate for strike one. He was looking for something else maybe. Two balls and one strike. He is in the he is batting for Tucker Williams, the pitcher, in the number five position. Here is your 2-1 pitch, and that is popped up. Shortstop is gonna have a play, and everybody's gonna have to stay where they are. Right off the wrist. Xander turned on it nicely, but got him, caught him a little bit inside there, and he popped it up in the air. And now if the Ironmen are going to do any more damage here in the first, it's going to be up to Ramey Wyatt. He is playing first base tonight. Uh, he's almost always in the lineup. If he's not pitching, he's over at third base, or he's today he's over at first base with Gavin Jones uh, on the bench. Gavin and Ramey kind of can switch all spots there. A lot of utility ability by both of them. Pitch to Ramey Wyatt he is inside, but he swings and fouls it back to the screen for strike one. Cade Wolford would bat next if Wyant get on. Here's your 0-1 pitch to Ramey Wyant. Well, that wouldn't that, hit him right that, in the middle of the back. Yeah, that hit him right, uh, right around the waist and didn't have much of a chance to get away. It looked like a breaking pitch that didn't break. And the second hits batsman of the inning. We'll load the bases. Wyant down at first. Ernst is still on second. Nolan Johnson over at third. And the sacks are loaded for the center fielder. Obviously two Kate hits Wolford. by a pitch, Pete, but a lot of the pitches have been inside by Lane here. We'll see if that's an issue. That one's on the inside corner. Cade takes a good swing, just gets a piece of it, fouls it back to the screen. The on-deck hitter, Brother Bodie, picks it up. So Cade Got an excellent RBI opportunity here, but there are two outs. Here's your 0-1 pitch. And there's a ground ball. And it's, it's fair. It's over the third base bag. Set, took, a, took a hop. Two runs are going to score as they were running on the, running on the hit. Uh, in the score is Nolan Johnson and Noah Ernst. And Cade Wolford with an RBI single down the line. The third baseman tried to spear it, but it got by him there. Kind of took a high hop on him. And Cade Wolford comes up with a big two RBI single. Ramey Wyant stops at second base, and the Ironmen now lead three to nothing here in inning number one. Big hit by the senior center fielder. And the inning continues for Bodie Wolford, younger brother, of course, of Cade Wolford. He's had got off to a good start for a sophomore. Saw light action as a freshman on the varsity, but he stepped right into a varsity role and been a contributor, yeah. pitching and hitting. Here's your pitch to Bodie. In there for strike one. One ball and one strike. So a couple of good RBI hits to the Ironmen after they got some runners on, taking advantage of a couple of hits batsmen too to get runners on. RBI double for Ernst, a two RBI single for Cade Wolford. Pitch is called strike on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Nice thing in Pete, it's nice to see the Airmen with three base hits here in the top of the, or the bottom of the first inning. Absolutely. Count is one and two to Bodie Wolford. Nate Lane trying to get out of the inning with just three runs being scored. And Bodie swings and fouls out of play to the right side. A procession of cars on Euron Street, I believe. I think they all came unscathed, but that was close. Right. We had, had a little bit of traffic over there, so you never, you never know. You kind of look the other way. There's a sign to warn them. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is. Uh, they come anyway. You know? Yes. 
Here's your one-two pitch to Bodie. There's a curveball. It's hit on the ground to the third baseman. Got it on the hop over to first. And he's a little high, but the first baseman gets his foot down. And so Bodie Wolford is retired on a ground out. But the Ironmen do some business in the first inning. There was uh, three runs on three base hits. There was no Hillsborough errors, and there was two men left on base. So at the end of the first inning of play, the Ironmen off to a good start. It's the Jackson Ironmen three, the Hillsborough Indian zero. You're listening to the Jackson Ironmen baseball on Fox Sports 1330 AM and 105.3 FM. Southeast Appalachian Regional Community Health of Ohio is proud to present the Search Project. The Search Project through the Jackson County Health Department is a program designed to decrease the negative impacts of COVID-19 and other public health issues and promote healthy behaviors through the deployment of community health work. The project is funded by CDC and serves 11 counties in southeastern Ohio. For more information, contact the Jackson County Health Department at 740-935-6322. Sir, we're receiving an urgent message from Honda Suzuki of Jackson. Stand by. It's the Polaris liquidation sale. Everything must go for a limited time only. Hurry into Honda Suzuki Polaris Can-Am and KO of Jackson now for the best selection. Check out the full inventory at HondaOfJackson.com or call 740-286-4956. Yes, we have it on radar. Look at that big red roof. Do not wait. Immediate financing available. The Polaris liquidation sale happening now. Honda Suzuki Polaris Can-Am and KO of Jackson. All right, top half of the second inning. The first inning was a good one for the Ironmen as uh, Tucker Williams put down Hillsborough 1 2 3 in the top half of the inning. Then in the bottom half of the inning, Jackson jumps out of the box with a three run inning. Uh, had three hits in there as well. And as we go to the second inning, it'll be the four, five, six hitters for Hillsborough. Cleanup hitter Brayton Hunter will lead it off. Here's the pitch from Tucker Williams. That pitch is low and away, ball one. Tucker in the first inning. Of course, retired Hillsborough. Uh, well, here's Burrow's side in order and had two strikeouts to start the game. Here's your 1-0 pitch to Hunter. And there's a ground ball by Simons in the left field. Hit hard, Sim just out of reach of the shortstop there. And Braden Hunter has Hillsborough's first hit. This will bring up Nick Burns, the center fielder. We remember Nick Burns from football, Dan. Sure do. If he's half a good baseball player, he is a football player. Watch out. They take one it. tough, hard-nosed football player, and I'm sure he's one of their top baseball players also, center fielder. Right. That was a one-sided game for the Ironman, but they just kept Burns. Acts like he's going to bump, but doesn't. It's called strike anyway. They I just think kept Burns giving the ball had about to 250 Burns. yards against this in a game we were winning easily. Right. You know, you look at his stats and you're thinking, oh, my God, they were upset. He did break a couple long ones. It certainly helped the stats. And that pitch is Ooh, good a nice curveball curve in there for strike two. No balls and two strikes. Well, and the, the Ironmen scored at will in that game yes. against Hillsborough. That kind of put them kind of – it was another one of, of five – in there, they're called strike three with the fastball, and Williams does quick business on Nick Burns for the first out. Yeah, Jackson had uh, five 30-point um, running score victories in the FAC. You can't do any better than that. Dominated the league in football. It was uh, fun for us. We were lucky enough to get to watch it front and center. Zach Berwinkle batting from the left side takes a fastball just inside for ball one. Braden Hunter started off Hillsborough's second inning with a ground ball single to left field. But then Tucker came back and struck out Burns on three pitches. So one out and one on here in the top of the second. And Hunter acts like he's going to go. Went way off the base, but then comes back. And the pitch was called ball two. Two I think balls the, and no strike. The league does know the effectiveness of Noah Ernst behind the plate. And they don't like to challenge his arm very often. Pitch was just outside to Burwinkle. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes now. So... Williams for a change falling behind one of the Hillsboro hitters. Here's your 3-0 pitch. Pitch is a little high, ball four. And so Hillsboro now with a little bit of a threat going here with one out as they have two runners on base. Hunter, who singled, is on at second now. Burwinkle on at first on a four-pitch walk. Here is Braden Oberbecht, the second baseman. If his parents are listening, apologies if I screwed up the last name. I think you were close. All right. Showed bunt, but fouled it back. So we'll see if he continues to want to 
get that fielder's choice down. Interesting. Down three in their bunning, but, you know, it's a long game. So if they can get two runners in scoring position, it might be the start of a big comeback. Might also say that they think that's the best thing to do against Williams. Looks like the Ironman might have had a play on, but the runner out there at second, Hunter, is wise. He's not very far off, and no throws made back to second. Simons was going that way to take a throw. Williams made one. Here's the pitch to Oberbeck. That curve ball stays up high. One ball and one strike. Two on, one out. He showed no sign of bunting there. Top half of the second inning, Jackson three, Hillsborough nothing. 1-1 one, one pitch to Oberbeck. Nice curveball lays in there over the outside corner. Oberbeck I don't, was frozen. Strike two, one ball and two strikes. Williams can throw hard. He also has a good curveball. We've seen them both so far. Here's your 1-2 pitch to Oberbeck. And that's another curveball, and Oberbeck ruins it by fouling it back behind us. Count remains, one ball and two strikes. Williams pitching from the stretch. One, two pitch ready to come again. Here it is. And there is a little line drive, looping line drive. Campbell's got it. Quick throw over to first. And just safe getting back is the runner at first base. A little looping line drive, but right at Campbell. He is able to make the play easily. A quick throw over to first to see if they could get Burwinkle off. He does get back in a, on a fairly close play. So there is now two outs and still two runners on base. And this will bring up the number eight hitter, Ashton Clemens. He is the uh, pitcher. I think I said before Nate Lane was the pitcher, but Nate Lane is number one, not the position number one, so I apologize for that. And Ashton Clemens takes a big swing and a miss, strike one. And he looked back at the umpire to ask him if that was a strike. Don't know, but he swung and missed, so it is a strike. It is a strike. 0-1, oh and, and Tucker gets a little ahead. There is another nice pitch, just missing. Just missing on that curve. One ball and one strike. Hillsborough with two, run, two men on, but with two outs, trying to cut into Jackson's early three-run lead. Swing and a miss on a letter-high fastball. Strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Williams working quickly. Here's your 2-2 pitch. High and away, ball three. Three balls and two strikes. Payoff pitch coming to Ashton Clemens. Big pitch for both the Ironmen and Hillsboro. Curveball called strike three. Goes to the curveball to get out of it. So in the inning for Hillsboro, no runs. They had one hit. There was no Jackson errors. Two runners left out there on base in the middle of the second. It's still the Jackson Ironmen three. The Hillsboro Indians zero. You're listening to Jackson Ironmen baseball on Fox Sports 1330 AM and 105.3 FM. And here is the Mona Lisa, painted between 1500 and 1503 by Leonardo da Vinci. This is quite possibly the most recognized painting in the world. Whatever you do, Cliff, stay away from that painting. Ah, don't worry about it. I have everything under control. <gasps> Oops. Some things are easier to fix than others. Thank goodness your car is one of them. If you ever find yourself in an accident, give the professionals at Monroe's Frame and Collision a call and let them get you back on the road in no time. In Jackson, call 288-1313. How do you hot head? Build your own burrito or bowl or pick a craft recipe from Leroy's lineup. At Hot Head Burritos, we have bold burrito and bowl combinations like the Hawaiian with fresh pineapple, seasoned chicken, and sweet habanero sauce. The Jalapeno Ranch, loaded with tender meaty steak and Leroy's spicy chicken featuring our famous hothead sauce burrito or bowl our craft menu features even more of what you love more choices more flavor it's all yours at hothead burritos bottom half we go to the bottom half of the second inning and uh, for the Ironman it'll be the 9-1 and 2 hitters that's Easton McGraw he was the only Jackson hitter in the lineup not to get to bat in that first inning Glenn Jackson uh, on the strength of three hits, a couple of hits batsmen by Hillsborough, and, uh, and some timely hits were able to score three runs, and that's where we stand right now, three to nothing in the bottom of the second. First pitch to Easton McGraw. And that, Third hit by a pitch. That hits him uh, in the buttocks, and uh, Easton goes down to first base, and that is the third hit batsman in 
Dan, in this game for uh, the Hillsboro pitcher. First two uh, were in the middle of the bat, Pete. You Ashton described Clemens. that one with a little more closeness there. Uh, it was a little lower. Better there than in the elbow, right? And, and Boston Campbell puts down a real nice bump, but it's foul. And so everybody will come back and we'll do it again. Strike one. McGraw down at first base the hard way on a hit batsman. Thank you to our sponsors. Listen to them between innings as they get their commercials in. But Ramey's Homes and Auto Group, Monroe Collision, Jackson County Banking Center, McDonald's of Jackson, Osborne Equipment Service, Honda, Suzuki, Polaris, Can-Am, and Jackson. And I'll finish up after this pitch. And they throw over to first base, does Clemens. And diving back in head first safely is Easton McGraw. He is the son of head coach Josh McGraw. Getting a chance to bat as well as field in this one. Here is the pitch, and it's fouled away. Strike two. No balls and two strikes to Boston Campbell. Campbell in the first inning popped up to the shortstop just out on the grass. Shortstop made a nice over-the-shoulder catch to retire him. The Dan Daly State Farm Insurance. Brian Moore Construction. Southern Ohio Smiles. Edward Jones by Chad Niddle. Jackson County Health Department search program in Hothead Burritos. We thank each and every one of you and support them the best you can, folks. Absolutely. That was another throw over to first base, and Easton's back in. This time he's running, and there's a fly ball into center field, and that's going to fall in there. And Easton uh, it was already the second base. Center fielder came up, but it was landed in front of him a few feet, and so Boston Campbell has a two-out single, and the Iron Men are threatening once again with runners on first and second and nobody out. It is interesting. He has worked the inside of the plate. Once again, Boston, that's a little bit in on the wrists on him, but he was able to muscle it out right over second base and find a spot out there in the short outfield. We get a big base hit, two on and nobody out yet. Right, your batting average goes down a lot when you have an 0-2 count or two strike count, but Boston was able to get a single on an 0-2 count and Simons Squares as if the bunt and fouls it back for strike one. Or Simon thinks it hit him, I think. I think he thought it was maybe foul tipped. If not, the if it wasn't, the runners could have run. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. I know that he wasn't sure what the call was there. I, I called it as a foul tip on a attempted bunt. That's the way I kind of saw it. I, did, I guess I don't know if it grazed the bat or not. If it didn't, runners could have advanced, but they didn't. So I think that was the train of thought. It was a foul tip. I think it is 0-1, nothing up on the scoreboard here to confirm us. They probably up there strike. And there's a bunt. Good bunt. A very nice bunt. Pitcher's got it. And he's not going to be able to make any throw. He was going to throw to first, but nobody was over there. The first, the first baseman was uh, coming in and didn't get back. The second baseman didn't go over, and Simons was trying to sacrifice, but instead he's got a bunt single. This is a good bunt halfway in between the home plate and the pitcher's mound. So the pitcher had to charge pretty aggressively to get there. By the time he did, Brian's good speed had him pretty well beating that out. And there is a pop fly, uh, the shortstop going out, the left fielder coming in, the left fielder Could be deep enough. back there, and he's got it. And here comes Easton McGraw. He's going to try to score, and he does without a throw. So a mid-level pop fly into center field, or rather into left field, turns into a sacrifice fly for Nolan Johnson. And so the Ironmen now lead 4 to nothing as McGraw scores. And Boston Campbell uh, still at second base. Simons stays at first base. Here is no, uh, Noah Ernst who hit a deep double to left field his first time. And Clemens starts him off with a curveball, and it's low and away, ball one. Noah really turned on that one, hit right at the base of the fence. Left fielder is playing deep again. Center fielder shaded over just a little bit to left center. He's deep as well, as is the right fielder. And that pitch is high and inside, ball one. One ball and one strike to Noah Ernst. One man out, but it was an out that scored a run, a sacrifice fly by Nolan Johnson. Curveball stays just a little bit high. 
for ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Ironman leading four to nothing, bottom half of the second inning. 3-0 pitch to Ernst. In there, strike one as he took pitch just over the knees. I think he was going to make him, uh, make Clemens throw a strike on that one. Now the 3-1 would probably get Noah with the green light if it looks attractive to him. 3-1 pitch to Ernst. Swing Ooh. and a miss. He didn't get cheated, but he didn't get it. Three balls and two strikes. So Clemens bounces back to make the count full to the Ironman's cleanup hitter. Another big moment in this game as Hillsborough tries to keep the Ironman at least within, at least within uh, fighting distance. And Ernst, everybody is running, and Ernst fouls the ball back. Yeah, Boston was almost all the way to third base when he foul tipped that one back. It was a running start. Right, you know, you're taking a chance there because if he swings and misses, you know. It's a line drive right at an infielder. Or that, too. But it also has the infielders moving as well, and it kind of disrupts the defense a little bit. 3-2 pitch to Ernst. Call oh. strike three on the outside corner. And that is the second out of the inning. And uh, Noah goes down, and this will bring up Xander Irvin. He popped up to the shortstop the first time. Got under a pitch. Now he gets to bat again with two runners on base. Pitch is in. Low ball one. Isn't it nice to have Hayden Milliken here? Helps us out when there's a little tech issue here and there. They throw down. Uh -oh. Oh, they've got somebody. Uh, they've got Boston Campbell. And they tag him out. Campbell got a little bit far off. They made a nice throw to second base. And they're able to get Boston Campbell in a run down there. Uh, so it goes down as a caught stealing there to end the inning. For Jackson in the inning, they do add to their total with another run. There was one run on two base hits. There was no Hillsboro errors. And there was one man left on base. So at the end of two innings of play, it's now the Jackson Ironman four, the Hillsboro Indians zero. You're listening to Jackson Ironman baseball on Fox Sports 1330 AM and 105.3 FM. Southeast Appalachian Regional Community Health of Ohio is proud to present the Search Project. The Search Project through the Jackson County Health Department is a program designed to decrease the negative impacts of COVID-19 and other public health issues and promote healthy behaviors through the deployment of community health work. The project is funded by CDC and serves 11 counties in southeastern Ohio. For more information, contact the Jackson County Health Department at 740-935-6322. Osborne Equipment Service. Is he out there? You sure you've got the right number? Is he there? Well, what's he look like? He's got white hair and spots. Is Ralph your dog? He's a Dalmatian. Why would he be here at Osborne Equipment Service? You always say you have something for everyone. We do with service for trucks, trailers, buses, and RVs, and we're family owned and operated. Maybe you should look in your backyard for Ralph. I'll just call his cell phone. Your diesel specialist since 1979. Osborne Equipment Service in Jackson, Ohio. Call 800-937-3501. All right, we go to the top half of the third inning. Jackson uh, added one more run to their total in the bottom half of the second. They now lead four to nothing. Tucker Williams out there on the mound for the Ironmen in two innings, uh, two shutout innings. He's only given up one hit. He has struck out four. He will face the nine, one, and two hitters in the lineup for Hillsboro. That's Gavin Greer, Zach Brown, and Nate Lane. Pete had to go back and check. Terry McGraw back there running the concession stand. Best smelling hot dog sauce you would smell anywhere, and I think the taste is equivalent to it. Pitch is down low, ball one. I'll tell you what, that tells me which way the wind is blowing. It I does. I wasn't sure before. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's blowing from the west. People brag about that every Swing. time we're here. Swing and a miss. Oh, yeah, they do a great job. And, and uh, you know, the concessions also supports uh, the bullpen club. It and, really does. And the baseball program. So think about that if you're thinking that a hot dog would taste good. Good curveball. It will taste good. And that is a uh, ball two, rather strike two, uh, from Tucker Williams to Gavin Greer. One-two pitch from Tucker. 
Swing and a miss, strike three. Ball gets away from Noah Ernst, and Greer is going to be safe at first base. That's going to go down as a strikeout and a wild pitch. Pitch was low and away, bounced away from Ernst and down to first base uh, on the wild pitch is Greer. Yeah, Greer swung at one. He couldn't be even begin to touch, but he was able to get down easily to first base. So that worked out for him. Runner on first. Zach Brown struck out to lead off the game, and instead of a strikeout, Williams has got a runner at first base. No outs here in the top of the third inning. Tucker already has five strikeouts in this contest. That pitch is down low to Zach Brown. Williams looks over his shoulder at the runner. There's the pitch. Good pitch right down the heart of the plate. Strike one, one ball and one strike. Williams is ready. Here's your one twenty. Oh, threw a nice curve in there. He Called got strike a strike. Two. Umpire is a delayed strike call, so it challenges us just a bit. But that was an awful pretty curveball that caught the edge of the inside of the plate. Right. He 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 has a an, an indicative lean yeah. for this. And there is a scolder right back at Williams. He's able to get a glove on it, but it goes uh, past him. And now they've got to play at third base. Is he safe down there at third? They're safe everywhere, they say. And so a hard line drive by Zach Brown goes for a base hit. Williams did get a glove on it, but that was hit a ton. It bounced off his glove into right field, and Greer is able to go all the way over to third base, and Zach Brown on the throw to third is able to go to second after a base hit. So now Hillsborough's got something going. Nobody out. Runners are on third and second, and we're getting into the heart of the lineup. Here's Nate Lane, who also struck out in the first, and that pitch is down low, ball one. Remember, the initial runner got on via the strikeout, but a wild pitch was able to get down to first base, and, boy, they got something going now. And they try to pick off the trail runner down at second base but he gets back well timed there but the runner saw it coming there and is able to get back safely count is one and zero to lane there's the pitch and it's popped foul out of play i believe it is to the left hand side a little bit behind that one ball and one strike but williams has five strikeouts and he could use a couple of them right here as runners two runners are in scoring position Count to Lane, one ball and one strike. Pitch to Lane, curveball, nice pitch, called strike two. One ball and two strikes. Williams going to that curveball in key situations. Here's your one-two pitch. Fastball is fouled out of play to, to the left side. Count remains, one ball and two strikes. Just a few clouds in the sky and very warm, about 80 degrees. So Perfect good. night. Beautiful very, night. Very nice. We went, we were here when it was at 40. Remember that, day? Yes, I do. Just not all that long ago. And we were here when it was really wet. Right, and Lane fouls the ball away again to the left side. Count remains one ball and two strikes. Trying to hang in there against Tucker Williams at a, at a key point for his team, who's down four. One, two pitch and fouled back at the screen again. Had a better cut at that one. Just got a piece of it, one ball and two strikes. Making Williams throw some pitches here in the third inning. But he is ahead in the count. This would be a big out. That first out's huge. Two runners in scoring position. One, two pitch coming from Williams. Curve ball stays up high and away. Ball two, two balls and two strikes. Hillsborough 0 and 9, uncharacteristic 0 and 9 to start the season. Probably 0 and 4 in the conference. I didn't ask that question. I should have. Williams fakes a throw to second, but there's nobody back there to catch it. Infielders playing straight away right now. There's the one two pitch, and there's Whoa. a hard grounder by Campbell and into right field. In to score is Greer. Let's see, Zach Brown, they will hold him at third base. And so Nate Lane with a, with a 
Hard single by the second baseman, Campbell, and Hillsborough has got their first run, and the inning is continuing now as they try to get back in the game. It's now 4-1. to one. Brown is over at third base, Lane at first, still nobody out. They've hit the ball hard the two times. Neither one, either one, both were able to find a hole in the uh, infield to get through, but hit pretty hard, so you've still got him first and third and nobody out. Walker Pence is the catcher. He grounded out to McGraw at third back in the first inning. How big was it for the leadoff hitter to strike out and beat out the throw down to first base right. to get this, you know, this inning started? And there is a throw down to second base, and it gets, uh, it hits the ground and gets by the shortstop Simons and in the score. Uh, the second run is Zach Brown going over to third is Lane, and uh, that is going to go down as an error on the second baseman. Uh, bounced in front of Simons there, and that allowed the run to score and allowed Lane to go all the way around the third base. So it's now four to two. See Morgan Williams. Assistant coach for the Ironman for Coach McGraw. He'll take a walk out, actually be talking to his pitcher, starting pitcher, and his son. Settle him down a little bit here. Right, Ironman was still a two-run lead, but Hillsborough has scored two to cut the lead in half, and they've got the next run sitting over there on third base with nobody out. The count to Walker Pence is one ball and no strikes. That pitch was called a ball. So Hillsborough showing some life here in the third inning on the second time through the order. Swing and a miss. Nice fastball. Two balls and one strike. Williams sh shakes off Ernst three times. Let's see what he's going to throw. Had in mind what he wants. Looks like a curve ball stays up high. Ball three. Three balls in one strike. He definitely wanted the curve, didn't he? See, that's what he wanted. A lot of red out on the field today as Hillsboro is red and white also. In there for called strike two as. If you're not watching the stream, Hillsboro wears the red. Jersey with the white pants. The Ironmen are white and white. That fastball called strike makes the count three and two to Pence. Pitch swing and a miss, and that's a big out on the number three hitter. Williams gets strikeout number six at a key time there. Lane, of course, still sits there down there at third base, but now there is one out, and here is Braden Hunter. Bats to the right side, and he had a single back in the second inning. He's got a chance for an RBI opportunity here as the cleanup hitter. Got two runs in, still looking at your fourth and fifth hitter in the lineup here for Hillsboro. Fastball looked pretty good, and it is called strike one. He might have been looking for a curveball and got a fastball. That stayed on his shoulder. Here's your 0-1 pitch. Another fastball hit on the ground to the shortstop, Simons. He's going to make the throw over to first. It does get the run in. Nate Lane scores. Simons was playing back. Elected to go over to first base, and Lane scores the third run. But Hunter is retired on the grounder to, to the uh, shortstop, and so now Hillsborough has cut the lead to 4-3, to three, but there's nobody left on base, and there's two outs. Nick Burns took a called strike three back in the second inning, and the first pitch to him is ball one. He rushed for around 1,500 yards this year for Hillsboro. He was the heart of their offense on the football field. He bats fifth for him on the baseball right, I diamond. Believe, I believe he played defense for them too. Linebacker spot. There was some pretty good running backs in the league this past year. Yeah, there was a pretty good one out there in center field for Jackson. Right, uh, and even with uh, some very good running backs with uh, uh, outstanding yardage, Cade Wolford gets the FAC Player of the Year award. Ends up first team All-State later on. There's the pitch, up high, ball two. two that balls. award was a no-brainer, no. Editor Pete. Absolutely not. And that's with him not playing in a lot of quarters, especially within, within the league, when and the Airmen had big leads. Right, there's called strike on the 2-0 pitch, two balls and one strike. 
Kincaid, of course, heading to Kent State University to play college football. There's the 2 1 pitch, and there's a there's line a drive into hit. center field by Nick Burns. He didn't look very good on his first at bat, but he did on that one, and the inning will continue. Uh, remember, Hillsborough had emptied the bases there uh, on that last ground out for an RBI, and so Burns becomes the first base runner. One thing After about that, it, they've made Tucker throw a lot of pitches here also in the top of the third inning. And uh, Zach Berwinkle stands up. He got on on a walk the first time. He bats from the left side. Pitch is called strike one. Three base hits in the inning for Hillsburg. It all started on a strikeout that got that first runner on. And that has certainly contributed to the Ironman's problems in this inning. Pitch is called strike two to Burwinkle. So Williams one out away from ending this third inning. Where Hillsborough has definitely got back in the game. And there is a ground ball back at Williams. Bounces off his glove. It's going to die behind him. He didn't see where it went. And so that ball was hit pretty hard. Uh, Williams unable to come up with it, which, you know, he was in the pitching motion there. And he would have had to backhand. It would have been an outstanding play. So that goes down as an infield single for Burwinkle, and the inning continues for Braden Oberbeck. Third hit of the inning for Hillsborough. They have three runs in already and now two on again. That pitch is in there for called strike one. This is the eighth batter to bat in the inning, and any thought that 0-9 Hillsborough would just lay down after being down 4-0, those thoughts have been dismissed. Pitch to Oberbeck is up high, ball one, one ball and one strike. As we've seen through our years in this league, Pete Wilson, they're all competitive. Frontier Athletic Conference matchups. Swing and a miss. Had a weak swing at that pitch that was low and away. Strike two to Oberbeck. Oberbeck uh, hit a looping line drive that Campbell caught in the second inning. Did get his bat on the ball. There's the pitch. Swing and a miss there. Had a weak swing on the curveball. So Williams gets out of it, but not before Hillsboro uh, scores Three runs on one, two, three, four base hits. There was one Jackson error, and there was one run, no two runners left on base. So in the middle half of the third inning, we've got a close one now. It's the Jackson Ironman four, the Hillsboro Indians three. You're listening to Jackson Ironman baseball on Fox Sports 1330 AM and 105.3 FM. Baby homes is all the shook up over our little rock bottom presses on america's most popular manufactured and modular homes ramey's homes has the largest selection of quality built to manufactured homes in southern ohio with the most flexible terms available don't be cruel hurry to ramey's mobile homes seven miles west of MacArthur on route 50 and two miles south of chillicothe on us 23 baby and we'll uh, see you there teddy bear Home. It's your sanctuary. It's pajamas at noon and cookies in the oven. It's fingerprints on the wall and heights measured in a doorway. It's the one place in the world that you know better than anyone else. Jackson County Banking Center wants to help you build that messy, wonderful, cherished place where you can live a life you love for years to come. That's our promise. Jackson County Banking Center, here for you now, here for your future. Visit vcnbfamily.bank for our construction special. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We go to the bottom half of inning number three. Uh, the Ironmen uh, had been up 4-0. to zero. That lead has been uh, cut into. It's now 4-3 after Hillsborough puts a three spot on the board in the top half of this inning. For the Ironmen, it'll be Xander Irvin, Ramey Wyatt, and Cade Wolford going up against uh, Ashton Clemens, the Hillsborough right-handed pitcher. Pitch to Xander Irvin has popped up in the air. The first baseman looked like he's going to try to play, shielding his glove against the sun, and he's got it for the first out. One pitch, one out here to start the bottom half of the third inning. Here's Ramey Wyatt. He got on on a hit by pitch in that first inning when Hills, when Jackson got off, got on the board quickly with a three-run first inning. Ramey playing first base today. Pitch to Ramey. It's hit on a bouncer to the third baseman. He's got it cleanly. Throws way across the diamond, and the first baseman makes a stretch and is able to come up with the ball. So two pitches and two outs. And here is Cade Wolford, the center fielder. Does he dare swing at this first pitch, Dan? You sure hate to see three pitches, three outs. 
I never mind seeing Cade try to put a bunt down. Well, with two outs and nobody on, he might do that. He did uh, in the in the first inning. He uh, he's had the biggest hit of the game for the Ironman with two RBIs. A shot right down the third base line, just inside the plate. That pitch is inside. Ball one to Cade. Ironman have five hits. Cade's brought in two runs. And that pitch is fouled in on his hands, and he swings and fouls it behind us for strike one. One ball and one strike. It wouldn't have hurt quite as bad. Two balls and one strike to Cade Wolford. Swing and a miss. That was inside, too, an inside fastball, and Wolford swings and misses. Two balls and two strikes. Ashton Clemens has consistently pitched inside, and that has included three batters he's hit. But he is hovering around the inside part of that plate. And there was another inside one. And that is fouled out of play behind us. Count remains, two balls and two strikes. Watching the people that have made the drive from Hillsboro, boy, when they see these foul balls hit right back into the street, they love watching for the uh, crunch of sheet metal. We haven't heard any yet. That can be expensive. It, it's painful. Here is your 2-2 two -two pitch to Cade. Ooh. And did that, oh my gosh, inside again. He yep. just missed it. Three ball, just missed hitting him, rather. Three balls and two strikes. Cade would be one player you sure don't want to give the free hit base with a hit by a pitch. 3 2 pitch coming to from Clemens. And that pitch is fouled behind us and out of play. It's making Clemens work for it after a two pitch, two out situation. Three-two pitch coming again. Low and away, ball four. And Wolford earned that walk, fouled away several two-strike pitches. And he's down at first base, two outs, but definitely a definite threat to run. I'm not exaggerating, am I? I don't think so. All right. Here is Bodie We'll see Wolford. if he watches one pitch, but I'll bet within two pitches he's off and running. Getting a good lead over there. And Bodie swings and fouls out of play. Strike one. Wolford not running on that pitch. No balls in one strike. And Clemens probably knows about Wolford's ability, and he throws over there and makes Cade hustle back to get back safely. No I'd balls in one strike. I'd have to say Cade's pretty much a marked man in the league, regardless of what sport he's playing. And another throw over there, this one much quicker. Clemens trying to keep Wolford as close as possible. Here's your 0-1 pitch. High and away, ball one. One ball and one strike. Bodie grounded out to third base back in the first inning. And Wolford is running. Got a good break. And there's the throw at high. And Cade goes into second base standing with a stolen base. He got that one easily, and he's fast, but he had a big jump on top of that. Yes, he did. Catcher got rid of it quickly. Throw was high, but there's no play down there at all. So the count to Bodie is, I call, oh, they called that strike two. One ball and two strikes. And there's a ground ball up the middle. Shortstop can't get it into center field. Here comes Kate around third. Here comes the throw home. Cut off by the pitcher. Bodie slides into second safely. So the Wolford boys collaborate on another run for the Ironman. Bodie hits a ground ball single up the middle. Cade comes around to score. They try to throw home. The pitcher cuts it off. Bodie's going to try to second, get the second anyway, and he slides in there safely on the throw in home. So an RBI single for Bodie, and the Ironman now lead 5-3. to three. Sophomore right fielder comes up big. Both Wolfords have had big hits tonight. They have three of the five RBIs for the Ironman. And here's Easton McGraw and uh, fakes the throw to second base, but there's nobody, no fielder over there to take it. Now there is. Pitch to Easton is high and outside for ball one. One ball and no strikes. Easton was hit by a pitch and scored in the second inning. His second at bat. And a swing and a foul at the plate. One ball and one strike.
Ironman now have the 5-3 to three lead. As three runs in the top of the inning for Hillsboro. They've been able to answer with one. Pitch to McGraw is a little high and outside. Two balls in one strike. One pitch coming, two outs, one run in. Ironman lead five to three. Outside, ball three, three balls in one strike. And uh, I want to remind our viewers, and I said viewers as well as listeners, you can get a video stream live on Total Media Facebook and Total Media YouTube. Pitch is down low, ball four. So McGraw gets on for the second time. Ironman now have two runners on base. And we go back to the top of the order in Boston Campbell. He has singled and popped up to the shortstop one for two. Catcher goes out for a talk with Clemens. He had two very quick outs, but since then, a walk, a single, and another walk. I tell you, Cade Woofer did a nice job fouling off a lot of inside pitches to keep his at bat alive till he was able to work the walk, and then the base hit right behind him after a stolen base by Bodie has given the Ironman an opportunity here. Now we have two on, two outs. And Campbell hits it hard. And they are able to get the force out at second base. A hard hit in the infield there, but they're able to get the force out at second. And that is the end of the inning. The Ironmen, though, get one run. It was two hits, no Hillsborough errors. There are two men left on base. At the end of three full innings of play, it's the Jackson Ironmen five, the Hillsborough Indians three. You're listening to Jackson Ironman Baseball on Fox Sports 1330 AM and 105.3 FM. Start and end your day with McDonald's of Jackson, Wilson, Oak Hill, or MacArthur. Start your day off with a McGriddle. For lunch, how about a Big Mac or Quarter Pounder with cheese? And dinner, enjoy some McNuggets or maybe a great shake and fries. Whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you're always cooking up something great from your Jackson, Wilson, Oak Hill, or MacArthur McDonald's. And I'm loving it. And you will, too. We go to the top half of inning number four. Jackson uh, leading the Hillsboro Indians and a good one here, five to three for Hillsboro. Let's see if they can keep the offense going. They retired pretty easily in innings number one and two, but scored three runs in the third. Tucker Williams still out there for the Ironmen. It'll be Ashton Clemens, Gavin Greer, and Zach Brown. That's the eight, nine, and one hitters for Hillsboro. First two innings, Tucker had given up one hit, no runs, but that last inning they got him for four singles in there, and they were able to pick up the three-run inning. Fastball stays up high, ball one. Forced him to throw a handful of pitches. Right, no action in the Jackson bullpen right now, but these pitchers are under a pitch count, and that is uh, fouled away for strike two. That's a rule, I believe, on the state side. Pete, we're certainly the enjoying the Sparky Howler Field new scoreboard. Anybody that comes to a game will appreciate it. Even you'll see it as you drive down here on street. Quickly, the uh, people, we honored them last game, but the folks that made that possible, Ohio Valley Bank, kind of the lead taker on that, Bryn Mawr Construction, the Howler family, Total Media and Stockmeisters, Southern Ohio Smiles, and Geiger Brothers Constructions, a Big shout out to those folks for making that $31,000 scoreboard really a thing of beauty. Just enhances this field. The count was two balls and two strikes, and now it's three balls and two strikes as Clemens will get a full count pitch from Williams now. Yes, and that scoreboard, completely private funding. Yes. Swing and a miss. That pitch might have been a little high, but Clemens swings and misses, and Williams records... Strikeout number eight, I believe. One, two, three, four. Or it is eight of them. Eight, eight. eight strikeouts. Here is Gavin Greer. He got on on a strikeout. In the, uh, rather, he reached base on a strikeout when the ball got by the catcher on was a wild pitch. It wasn't Ernst's fault. 
Greer swung on a bad pitch, and it worked out for him. Yeah, we've actually only gotten three outs that were not strikeouts so far in this game. Williams' control has been pretty good. Got behind some of the hitters in the last inning, and Hillsboro was able to deliver some hits. That pitch to Greer is a way ball one, one ball and one strike. Curveball is hit in wow, the air he... and into left center field. Nice swing by Greer. Did, did he time well. that swing on that curveball beautifully? Like, like you know, he was maybe looking for it and just made nice contact and hit it in the right place between the left and center fielder. So another hit for Hillsboro. He becomes the one-out base runner, does Greer down at first base. Here is Zach Brown, who uh, singled and struck out one for two. He's also scored a run. Hillsboro now with uh, six hits in the game. Ooh. Ooh, very much inside and scooting out of the way is Zach Brown. Jackson five, Hillsboro three, top half of inning number four. Two teams will lace them up and go at it again tomorrow at Hillsboro. Looks like the weather will allow it. There's a fly ball into right field, a line drive, and Bodie. What a catch. Did he get it? Yes, he All caught right. it. He got it right on his uh, shoe tops there. Wasn't sure he's going to be able to hang on, let alone get there, but that put a gold star by that play by what? the right fielder, Bodie Wolford. That's a shot down between Bodie and the uh, – foul line and Bodie on the dead run reaches up to make that catch and that's huge because that would have probably produced a run from first base if he doesn't get that right a run and uh, the inning continues for the meat of the order and Nate Lane is up now he has struck out and single he was in on that rally in the third inning so a really nice play there by Bodie Wolford didn't think he was going to be able to make it but he did pitches outside and high one ball and one strike to Nate Lane. One on and two outs. We're here at the top of the fourth inning on a beautiful night for baseball at Sparky Haller Field. Nice pitch on the outside corner. Yes, it was called strike two. One ball and two strikes. So Tucker one pitch away from maybe getting out of the inning here in the, in the fourth. Ironman holding a two-run lead. There's the one-two pitch, and there is a bouncer. Campbell's got it on the third bounce over to first. Retired. So in the inning for Hillsborough, they do get one runner on on one base hit, but no Jackson errors and one man left on base. So in the middle of the fourth inning, still the Jackson Ironman five, the Hillsborough Indians three. This is Jackson Army Baseball on Fox Sports, 1330 AM and 105.3 FM. And by, it's the Polaris liquidation sale. Everything must go for a limited time only. Hurry into Honda, Suzuki, Polaris, Can-Am, and KO of Jackson now for the best selection. Check out the full inventory at HondaOfJackson.com or call 740-286-4956. Yes, we have it on radar. Look at that big red roof. Do not wait. Immediate financing available. The Polaris liquidation sale happening now. Honda, Suzuki, Polaris, Can-Am, and KO of Jackson. How do you hunt head? Build your own burrito or bowl, or pick a craft recipe from Leroy's lineup. At Hot Head Burritos, we have bold burrito and bowl combinations, like the Hawaiian with fresh pineapple, seasoned chicken, and sweet habanero sauce. The Jalapeno Ranch, loaded with tender, meaty steak. And Leroy's Spicy Chicken, featuring our famous Hot Head sauce. Burrito or bowl, our craft menu features even more of what you love. More choices, more flavor. It's all yours at Hot Head Burritos. You're listening to Jackson Ironman Baseball on Fox Sports 105.3 FM and AM 1330 WYPC Jackson. Bottom half of inning number, inning number four, and Ryan Simons leads off for the Ironman and takes called strike one. Simons has uh, singled twice. He's two for two, and he scored a run. Good start for Ryan. 7-4 Jackson baseball team taking on 0-9 Hillsboro, but it's been nothing easy about this one so far, Pete Wilson. 5-3, to three, the Ironman do have the lead. Ironman hoping to... That win. lead was 4-0 at once. It was 4-0. Ironman hoping to tack on some runs here. In the bottom of the fourth, they've got the 2-3-4 hitters up. 
Ryan Simetz is two for two with a stolen base and a run scored, so he's having a good one. Absolutely. That pitch was low and away, so it's one ball and one strike to Ryan Simetz. And there's a ground ball or a bouncer to the shortstop. Got it cleanly. Big throw over to first. Got him for out number one. So Simons is retired for the first time tonight, and that is the first out of the inning. And this will bring up Nolan Johnson. Nolan has a sacrifice fly RBI and also reached on a hit by pitch. He did score on that. So he scored one, and he's driven in one. No official at bat yet. And there is a line drive. I believe it's going to fall in there, and it's, it's going to go by the center fielder. It goes all the way to the fence. Nolan is going to be able to stand up with a, stand up, uh, with a double there, uh, a one-out double, and uh, Johnson. Crushed that line drive. He certainly passed did. Passed the center fielder to the fence. He coasts into second base. The Ironman with one out now, man in scoring position. Here is Noah Ernst. He doubled back in the first, took a called strike in the Second, so he's one for two, an RBI and scored a run. So the Iron Man, a couple of extra base hits, uh, one by Johnson and one by Ernst. Both doubles. Nice pitch there to Ernst. To Shortstop really it. paying attention to Nolan Johnson back there on second base. So there is a huge hole there between third base and shortstop if Noah Ernst can turn on it. And Ernst is a right-handed hitter and stepping off the mound and faking a throw back to second base. They seem to be very concerned about no Nolan out there on second. That pitch stays high, a little bit high. One ball and one strike to Nolan Ernst. Noah Ernst, rather. A Nolan and a Noah, back-to-back. -back. They'll challenge you a little bit. And they throw back there again. Goes off the glove of the shortstop this time, but not far enough for Johnson to go. Yes, you're right. They're paying a lot of attention to the runner out there at second base, Nolan Johnson. Perhaps thinking that he might try to steal with one out. We know he has the, the speed. There's the pitch. Called strike two on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes to Noah Ernst. Noah's going to have to protect that outside edge of the plate. And another fake throw to second base. Stepped off the rubber and turned around but did not throw. Well, if anything, Nolan has their attention, doesn't he? Now, that usually helps the batter. Here's the one-two pitch. Curveball stays high, a slow curve. It broke, but too late. Two balls and two strikes to the Ironman catcher. Two-two pitch, up high, ball three. Three balls and two strikes. Sun coming back out. One runner on, there's just one out. First base obviously open, a full count to Noah Ernst. Jackson Iron ladies. We presume are playing up on the hill against Hillsboro. And the 3 2 pitch. Foul back in Hillsboro. I know Dan considered the front runner in the Frontier Athletic Conference this year. So, they how big a game is that up on the hill? Because our Iron Ladies have certainly been nothing short of outstanding. Right. Hillsboro has an outstanding pitcher that's using the key in softball, and they can, they can pitch all the time, not just every, right. every twice a week or whatever. And, uh, as a matter of fact, we know how good the Wellston Lady Rockets are. Hillsborough defeated them earlier in the season. It's a big game up there in softball. If we find out how they're doing, we'll let you know. The count to Ernst is three balls and two strikes. Nolan Johnson with a one-out double out there at second base. Certainly has the attention of the middle infielders as well as the pitcher for Hillsborough. 2 pitch. Just oh. got a piece of it. Off the umpire's mask, too. Oh he boy, takes it off quickly and kind of walks it off a little bit there. Yeah. We heard a clang, but yes. he felt more than that. That's moments like that you earn your pay behind the plate. Oh, yeah. Well, it's tough on the catcher and can be tough on the umpire as yes. well. Yes. 
Umpire puts his mask back on. He's ready to go. So is Ernst. So is Clemens. 3-2 pitch again. High and away, ball four, and Ernst able to work a walk. And he goes down to first base, and then the Ironmen now have two runners on base for Xander Urban. Couple of pop-ups, one to short, one to first baseman. By Xander, number five. Austin Campbell him. got a little time down there in the uh, bullpen, Pete, warming up, so we don't know we might see Boston for the night's over. Or possibly by the next inning. And uh, Coach McGraw, I think, calling for a balk there, but not called. I'll admit that 90% of the time I never know when one occurs. <laughs> and that pitch is fouled back behind us for strike one. One ball and one strike. Pete, can you guarantee all the home games will be this nice weather? No, we can't. You won't? Okay. We know, we know better. We've been around too long. Yes, we have. And Xander fouls back at the screen. No balls and two strikes. And so Clemens jumps ahead of Irvin here. Key batter right here as the Ironmen have a two-run lead, but they have two runners on base, one man out. They have the 5-3 lead. We're in the bottom of the fourth. There's the pitch to Irvin. Down low, ball one gets away from the catcher, and both runners are going to advance. Johnson already had a pretty good lead out there, and as soon as he saw the ball pop away, he took off, and the catcher makes no throw. The trail runner, of course, uh, goes as well. And we're going to call that a pass ball. I think the catcher should have had that, should have caught the ball there. And both runners advance one base. It's now third and second, and the pitch to Xander Irvin is up high, and now it's two balls and two strikes. Two outs, I mean one out, two on. Runners at third and second. Ironman lead five to three, hoping to build on that lead. RBI opportunity for the senior. And that pitch is popped up, and it's going to go out of play to the right side. Two balls and two strikes, it remains. Pretty good crowd here, Dan. Yep, yep, good Jackson crowd on hand. Biggest crowd we've seen in our this now our third broadcast down here at the field. Yep, pretty good. Hillsboro brought more people, a lot more people than Greenfield did last week, but that was kind of a brutal day rain-wise. That pitch stays way high, gets away from the catcher, but nobody is going to advance on that. The count remains three balls and two strikes, or the count goes to three balls and two strikes on that pitch way out of the strike zone. Clemens has thrown a lot of pitches too. Yes, he has. It was 0-2 on Urban, but is now 3-2. Here's the pitch. High and inside, ball four, and the bases are loaded. Johnson is at third, Ernst at second. Xander Irvin goes to first, and Hillsboro uh, coach Ben Miller calls timeout. He might be thinking about a pitch count also. It's been a lot of pitches thrown by his starter. Ramey Wyatt coming up to the plate. One thing Ramey does, he puts the bat on the ball just pretty consistently, Pete Wilson. So an opportunity here for the Ironman to up this 5-3 to three lead that they have here in the bottom of the fourth inning. All right, and uh, while, a pinch there's a, runner. while there's a conference going out there, yes, we're going to have a pinch runner. Xander Irvin comes in to take a break. Sometimes he comes in as a relief pitcher too, but going down to first base, uh, looks it's like... Eli number. Ray coming in as a pinch runner. We know he's a very athletic young man, football player, basketball player, now baseball player this year. And uh, he's got some... Uh, Action as a pitcher this year and has done actually very done well. Done very well. Not scared yes. to go to him as in relief roles. Right. Ramey Wyant, Bodie Wolfer, Eli Ray, and Xander Irvin, all credited by Coach McGraw with pitching well in that Saturday doubleheader. Wyant will come up. He reached on a hit-by-pitch, one of three to reach by hit-by-pitch so far in this game from the Ironman, and then he grounded out the third. Ramey, well-respected, was an all-FAC player last season. Clemens does stay out there. So it was just a conference there. And there's a foul ball back, and the wind kicking up now. 
No balls in one strike. Hey, on the sports side, Dan, we want to congratulate uh, Chad Carpenter, uh, hired by the Board of Education at their last meeting as the new head girls basketball coach. He's been the assistant under Coach Walburn for a number of years, does a great job. Kind of headed up the defense all year this year on that outstanding team and season we had, and a great, great move by the Jackson Board of Education to move Chad up to the number one seat there. He'll do, right. he'll do a great job. He already has a lot of plans in, in place. And that pitch is fouled away. The count to Wyatt, by the way, is one ball and two strikes. Chad, obviously new coach, but a lot of experience. Even before his uh, years here at Jackson under Matt Walburn, he coached under Matt Combs on the boys' side up at Minton County. That's a pretty good tutor to have as well. Not bad. Here's your one-two pitch to Ramey Wyatt. Inside chin music to Ramey Wyatt. Two balls and two strikes. Nowhere to put Ramey. Bases are loaded. Just one out. Johnson at third. Ernst at second. And now down at first base, Eli Ray. The pinch runner. And that pitch. Oh, oh plunked Wyatt. And for the second time he's hit, he's going to not only get first base, but he's going to get an RBI through his trouble. And I believe we're now going to have that pitching change. Johnson comes in to score. Ernst goes to third. Eli Ray down to second. And Ramey Wyatt gets an RBI the hard way on the hit by pitch. Coach Miller kind of puts his arm around the pitcher and talks to him. Uh, it's a tough, tough year so far for Hillsborough, even though they've played very well tonight and kept this game really a contest here. They were 0-9 coming into the season. But uh, like he had told us, a lot of young players. This is a sophomore-dominated team. They're working for the future. And this Ironman team, obviously, a little more experience. And, it's you know, we've got a nice mixture of seniors, juniors, and sophomores, Pete, that play on this lineup. So tells you kind of the strength of Coach McGraw's system. And the Ironmen are going to be facing a left-hander, Ben Miller, who was not uh, in the lineup uh, to start the game. Came, he's going to come off the bench and be the pitcher here in relief of Clemens. Just watching his first few pitches kind of comes a little bit on a sidearm look. Going to be pitching from the stretch as he'll come in with three runners on the base. Clemens is going to get credit for uh, three and uh, one-third innings of work. We'll see Ironman get another player in. Um, Leighton Camp is going to be in as a pinch runner for Ramey for the second time tonight, took a pitch right in the middle of the back. The second one got him an RBI. Ironman leads six to three as a run was forced in on that hit by pitch. Cade Wolford now will once again get a chance to bat with the bases loaded. He came through the last time. Cade's having a big night, had the big hit right down the third baseline that drove in two runs in the first inning, walked in the uh, third inning, got a stolen base, scored a run. And now another opportunity here for Cade with bases loaded and just one out. Cade, Bodie, and it looks like Easton all have an opportunity here to huddle up with Coach McGraw down their third baseline. They'll break up that huddle, and we're about to play baseball again. Miller, of course, uh, gets his chance to warm up, and he's just about completed his warm-up tosses. I'd say that Ashton, it's a straight change. I'm not sure that Ashton Clemens is, is out there. They only brought 12 players. Miller was in the dugout, so I got a feeling you're right, Pete. Just by watching his warm-ups, Pete, has he thrown a strike yet? Uh, he's been a, been a little bit wild there. I'm sure he's just trying to get loose as sure. well. But, of course, there's no place to put anybody. And we can't really see the bullpen, whether he's even warmed up down there or not. The dugout kind of blocks our view.
Catcher runs out, has a discussion with the pitcher, and I think we're just about ready to play. Once again, bases loaded, one out, one run already in. Ironman with the 6-3 lead, and senior Cade Wolford at the plate for Jackson. Well, let's see about this matchup. Miller coming off the bench against the senior Wolford. Miller has to throw strikes. First pitch is in there for strike one. Boy, his warm-ups were everywhere. And had a nice fastball right on the inside corner there to have his first pitch. Here's your 0-1 pitch to Cade. High and away, ball one gets away from the catcher. Here in the score is Noah Ernst. He slides. That ball stayed all the way back at the backstop. Still, they had a play, but Ernst was able to scoot home. You have about one second to think on whether you're going to come on that, Dan. And Ernst came, and it worked out for him. Both runners also advanced, so we're now second and third. One one's the count on Cade. Seven to three is your Ironman lead. Right. Uh, the scoreboard never did put up that other run, Dan. Finally got the sixth one up. We should have one more. Pitch to Cade is called strike two on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Inside, gets away from the catcher, and in to score safely as Eli Ray hustled, slid underneath the, the tag by the pitcher, and two wild pitches with the, with the runner at third has led to two runs. So good hustle there by Eli Ray, Dan, to get that run. Ramey Wyant now over at – well. That, it's, it's, it's a little Ramey. thing, Pete, but does that tell you how valuable Noah Ernst is? Probably both those pitches don't get through him. Both of them got through Hillsboro, and they resulted in runs. That's Leighton Camp down at third base, isn't it? Yes, the it is. Ironmen have scored three runs now. It is, it is now 8-3. to three. Scoreboard says 7-3, to three, so – we think we're right. Pitch to Wolford. Swing and a miss. And that is the second out of the inning. First time they'd gotten Cade tonight. And Bodie Wolford will now bat. He Bodie had the big hit la last time for uh, RBI to drive in his brother. Ground out and singled. Strike one over the inside corner. A fastball from the lefty. Stays outside, one ball and one strike. See, and one now, thing, I think the lefty's got a little bit of smoke on it, doesn't he? He's, right. His fastballs are pretty quick. Yep, get, the ball gets right up there quickly. One ball, rather no balls and one strike to Bodie. Here's your pitch. Outside, ball two, two balls and one strike. Camp on third base. Ironmen have been aggressive on the base pass again, including when the ball gets away from the catcher. And it's a take a chance when you do that, but it's worked out for the Ironmen both times. And Bodie swings and fouls out of play. This is one of those opportunity innings for Jackson. They've scored three times. They've only had one hit, but there's been two walks and a hit by a pitch. A couple wild pitches. The Ironman, the result is a three-run inning. Now the scoreboard's right. The 8-3 to three is up there. And a strike out there as the uh, ball gets away from the catcher, but uh, they're able to tag Bodie out. So Miller gets the strikeout, but the Ironmen do score three runs in the inning. Looks like there was one base hit, no Hillsborough errors, one runner left on base. At the end of four innings of play, the Jackson Ironmen have built their lead. It's now the Ironmen eight, the Hillsborough Indians three. You're listening to Jackson Ironmen Baseball on Fox Sports 1330 AM and 105.3 FM. Our family works hard so we can serve your family. That's the motto at Ramey's Used Cars, which is located seven miles west of MacArthur on US Route 50, next to Ramey's Homes. Ramey's has been providing quality pre-owned vehicles since 1970, and Ramey's also has a high quality parts department. Give Ramey's Automotive a call today at 596-4694, and don't forget to check out John's weekly specials. Just look for the signs and the vehicles in the front of the lot. 
Financial advisor Chad Niddle of Edward Jones is a proud sponsor of Cincinnati Reds Baseball on 97 Country the Bull WCJO. I'm Chad Niddle, your Jackson Edward Jones financial advisor. I believe feeling rich is less about reaching a magic number and more about living life on your terms with financial strategies that help support a life you love. Because the key to being rich is knowing what counts. So contact me today at 740-286-4872 and let's find your rich. Edward Jones, member Securities Investor Protection Corp. All right, we go to the top half of the fifth inning. Ironmen now lead 8-3 to three after adding three runs to their total in the bottom of the fourth. And uh, it will be... Uh, Let's see, Tucker Williams still out there for the Ironman. Uh, Walker Pence, Braden Hunter, and Nick Burns scheduled for Hillsborough. Williams uh, has uh, given up uh, three runs and been uh, touched up for uh, six base hits, but has an 8-3 to three lead. The strikeout ball has helped him. He has, looks like he has eight strikeouts. As is with always at spring sports, the Ironman with a very busy week. Tonight at Hillsboro, tomorrow night at Hillsboro, but Thursday night we'll be back on the air with Fairland comes to town, Pete Wilson, with a broadcast in the stream. And then the Ironman will play again on Saturday at home here with Zane Trace. We'll be back on the air for that one. So busy week of baseball. First two pitches are called balls to Walker Pence. Two balls and no strikes. All three, three balls and no strikes. Three O pitch in there across the letters. Strike one, three balls and one strike. Pence is grounded out and struck out 0 for two. Trying to get on any way he can. I'm sure he'd be glad to get a walk. Here's your three one pitch. Nice pitch, curve ball. Pence saw that it was in there, swung and fouled it back to screen. Strike two. Three balls and two strikes. The wind kicked up and we know that there's still more hot dog sauce. It does smell good. People love it. If you're down here at a ballpark, make sure you get a hot dog with the sauce. Oh, line drive into center field. That hit right on the button, and Pence has a leadoff single here. Uh, I don't know whether Terry McGraw, the coach, the wife's coach, who kind of uh, manages the concession stand back there, does the hot dog sauce. But for the... Uh, I will say either she or her mother-in-law or both. Okay, well, for the Grand Slam Supper, uh, they made enough chicken noodles to feed 400 people. Oh, I know. That was something. Spectacular. What a night. You got to be there. I wasn't able to get to that, but what an well, event. You, well, you were about the only one. <laughs> Here is Braden Hunter. He is singled and uh, grounded out to short, one, uh, one for two. So Hillsborough's got the leadoff runner on. Swing and a miss, strike one. Speaking of events, how about the spring fling, Pete Wilson? You were there covering that, the Jackson Marching Band. Sixth grade all the way up to seniors. 300, over 340 band 340 members, members serenaded the crowd. In case you weren't counting. And, and it was a huge crowd. Oh, my. I tell you what. It, when you look across and you see the home stands full, that's a big place in the gymnasium. You know that the band has support. What an event. Curveball stays up just a little bit high. Ball one. One ball and two strikes. And, you know, not only do they get great attendance, uh, people, businesses spend a lot of money. They they step up for the support band. them. Just like it is with a lot of the sports. Sure is. The program depends on support clubs in the community. Is it just the athletic budget? Athletic budget isn't going to do it. Got to have support from the community to have have the program have the support that it needs and desires and deserves. Pitch stays up high. Ball two. I'm sorry. Ball three. Three balls and two strikes. Swing and a miss, strike three. Williams gets strikeout number nine, and it's a big one, one out. Over here's Nick Burns. He has singled and singled. He has struck out and singled one for two. And he's going to go gonna down and get a little direction from head coach Miller down on the third base side. 
and uh, Coach Morgan Williams out to talk with his son, junior pitcher Tucker Williams here with one out, one on. Sure, they'd love to get another inning or so out of Tucker, but we're maybe going to see a change right now. And it is going to be Xander Irvin coming in. Nope, he just brought kind of a rosin bag out. Oh, okay. Good job, senior Xander. Right, well, Xander often comes in as a relief pitcher, so he had me fooled there. Charlie. Didn't see him in the bullpen, but. Charlie. So Tucker Williams will go to work on Nick Burns here. One out, one on. Top half of inning number five. Ironman lead eight to three. Boy. Pitch is low and away. Ernst keeps it in front of him for ball one. Easton McGraw really in tight on third base, thinking about a potential sacrifice, which is interesting with an 8-3 lead by the Ironman. You need a lot of sacrifices. It's a good pitch. Good fastball over the outside corner. Strike one. One ball and one strike to Nick Burns. And that ball is popped up. First baseman uh, comes Might have a play. Wyatt. Oh, couldn't quite oh. get it. I tell you, he was battling the sun there. Didn't get his glove on it. Uh, and uh, one that probably Ramey feels he should have caught, but he didn't drop the ball, so it's, we're calling it a foul ball. First first it's time cut. this year it that was a tough play. first base and right field are battling a bright sun out there. Not a lot of clouds in the sky. Beautiful day, but, boy, it's, a, it's brutal out there when you got one up high in the air. One, two pitch and just puts the bat out there and is able to ruin it with a foul ball. One ball and two strikes still to Nick Burns. Swing Oof. and a miss. Good fastball there by Tucker Williams. A lot of pepper on that one. And Williams gets strikeout number 10 now for the second out of the inning. Zach Berwinkle will come up, the first baseman. And that is 10 strikeouts, and we're just two-thirds of the way into the fifth inning, folks, so you can do the math on that. Pitch is high, gets through all the way to the screen. That wild pitch is going to allow Pence to go to second base. Swing and a miss. Berwinkle overpowered on that fastball. One ball and one strike. He is a lefty at the plate. Righty versus lefty. And, and a ball, shot. Ball is hit deep to left field, right field. Bodie Wolford going back, back, back at the fence. Did he catch it? By golly, he did. What a catch. Bodie went. Bodie, whoa. Went way back on there, and he's a little, just a, maybe just a little bit shaken up there. He's on his knees right there. Brother Cade over there looking in on him. He's right at the base of the fence over the shoulder catch on the dead run, and he's shaking off the contact, but you know what? He held on to it. What a big catch by the sophomore right fielder. All right, and uh, Bodie's still out there with Cade. Coach and McGraw going to take a walk out that direction to make sure he's okay. Right. He's, now they're both walking back in, Cade and Bodie together, and, and uh, that's the second time uh, that Bodie has made a really great catch out there in right field. Both times I thought he's not going to get that, and he did. Well, Cade checking on him, and I'll guarantee you Tucker Williams is very happy for his efforts on that play defensively. Absolutely. As uh, Berwinkle, the left-handed hitter, gave it quite a ride. Let's keep it here, Pete, since we've talked our way through most of this inning, and we'll give the sponsors another shout-out, which they are so special to us, to allow us to do these games, not only on the radio, but stringing them out there so you can sit in front of your TV and watch them. But Ramey's Home and Automotive Group, Monroe Collision, Jackson County Banking Center, McDonald's of Jackson, Osborne Equipment Service, Honda Suzuki Polaris, Can-Am of Jackson, Dan Daly, State Farm Insurance, Brian Moore Construction, Southern Ohio Smiles, Edward Jones, thank you, Chad Niddle, Jackson County Health Department, Search Program, and Hot Head Burritos. They are our sponsors, and they make all this possible. And I tell you what, uh, 
Been a pretty quiet crowd so far, but I tell you what, Bodie Woofer got a nice round of applause as he came back into the dugout. Seems to be okay. He's a pretty tough young man. But he took a shot there into the fence on the dead run, catching it over his shoulder. Beautiful play defensively, big play to keep this 8-3 lead alive for the Ironman. I didn't remember the sun's out, and that's right field. <laughs> <coughs> We all, know, we all know about the perils of playing right field here at Howler Field when the sun's out. All the right fielders through all these years that have played for Jackson Ironman Baseball, they can tell you about it. Oh my, it's just a sickening feeling to watch a right fielder who has lost the ball in the sun. They know the ball is coming and they just can't keep their eye on it because of the bright sun right in their eyes. Young man coming up, Pete Wilson. They haven't been able to get out yet tonight. Easton McGraw hit by a pitch. And uh, on with a walk, he has scored a run. And the first pitch is inside and low, ball one. Ironman batting the bottom half of the fifth, leading eight to three, hoping to stay undefeated in the Frontier Athletic Conference. If they do, they would go to three and zero. Oh. It would also be their eighth win overall against four losses. But that's a little early to be saying that. And Another. That, that hits him on the knee there, it looked like. Easton has been hit twice. Ramey, Ramey Wyatt has been hit twice. Nolan Johnson just once, but that's five batters that have been hit by a pitch tonight. Right, I tell you, Easton, Easton McGraw hasn't got a hit, but his on-base percentage, you can't get any better. Nope. Here is Boston Campbell, who uh, is one through three, including a single. First pitch from Miller, and Campbell puts it down. What a great Beautiful. Run. And there's going to be no throw. It... Uh, dies in that in that uh, deep blue grass or whatever it is they got planted there boston fast enough getting down the line there was no even play if they could have got to it solid single bunt for boston and right i in quickly with two on right just uh, six inches off the line as it is and far away from the that the catcher can't do it and the pitcher and third baseman don't have a prayer so the Ironmen now have two runners on on a beautifully executed Bunt single by Boston Campbell. And there is another How about bunt. a second one? And there's going to be another one by Ryan Simons. That was a little bit different. That one uh, hopped out about halfway between home and third, but I don't think they were looking for it, and the ball just died. Hat trick for Ryan Simons. Two bunt singles. He has three singles on the day, plus a stolen base, plus a run scored. And the bases are loaded quickly, Pete Wilson, and nobody out. And Nolan Johnson with the double, a sacrifice fly, and he reached on a hit by pitch. Could we start thinking about a five-run inning? It would be nice, and that pitch is low and inside ball one. That could end the game. Nobody out yet. Well, two bunt singles, third baseman, of course, with runners on base. Kind of has to play it straight out there at third base, so... First pitch to Johnson, or the second pitch to Johnson is inside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. No place to put the arm in left fielder here. Miller victimized by a couple of bunt singles after hitting the first batter. 2-0 pitch. Outside, ball three. Ooh, now what do you, if you're Nolan, you probably need to make him th pitch a strike here, but Nolan's last time up hit a shot to left center field. Rio pitch coming to Nolan Johnson. Right down the heart of the plate for strike one. Three balls and one strike. He appeared he was taking all the way. I think he was taking that one. I'd say not necessarily this one. And that pitch is another good one, and Johnson fouls it back to the screen. So now it's three balls and two strikes. Ben Wilson, the pitcher for Hillsborough, has to throw strikes here. Bases loaded. Nobody out. 3-2 pitch coming to Nolan Johnson. Bases loaded. Here's Ground a shot. Ball, and it's just through the infield. One run scores. Here comes the second run. He's going to score two. Uh, Easton McGraw and Boston Campbell scores over to third. Is Simons in the second on the throw in is Nolan Johnson and Johnson with a two RBI single, give him three RBIs now for the game, and the Ironman's lead is now 10 to three. Sacrifice fly, a double, a single, a two RBI single. It's been a nice 
job at the plate for your number three hitter, Nolan Johnson. Head coach Ben Wilson is going to go out to the man, mound, and he's going to make a pitching change. Noah Ernst will be up at the plate. He'll have runners on second and third and an opportunity here once again. The Ironmen now have the 10-3 lead. Three more runs in this inning would be a mercy rule. Okay, number we never We never mind those. Number 21, this is uh, Logan Zerfus coming in. He is also coming in off the bench. He is the third pitcher tonight for Hillsboro. Right. Three and a third for Clemens. And one and a third for Miller. I'd like to see tonight, Pete Wilson. The other night we had 12 runs on six hits. We've got 10 hits tonight. I'm going to hit the ball well tonight. You add in five hit by pitches and an, and a couple of walks, it turns into a ten inning perform or ten run performance so far, and we're just in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Noah Ernst has had a pretty good game. He has an RBI double, also uh, walked and then struck out. So he has one through two, scored two runs, driven in run, and he's got a chance to do some more damage here with uh, the with uh, two runners on base. Simon's over at third, Johnson at second. Armin now with their biggest lead of the game, seven runs, 10 to three. Catcher, pitcher having a discussion out there near the pitcher's mound. The umpire now walks back and we should be playing baseball here shortly again. And our sports editor Todd Compson is running around. He's been to Wellston for a baseball and softball game. Wellston won both baseball and softball against Nelsonville, York. Up on the hill, Dan, Hillsboro five, Jackson three in the seventh inning. Wow. Close game up there, but Hillsboro ahead right now. Two of the top teams in the Frontier Athletic Conference for girls softball. Pitch to Noah Ernst, nice, nice spear by the catcher as that ball bounced up there and was also wide, and that saved a run probably. A count goes to one and O oh on Noah Ernst. Herman have scored in every inning so far in this contest. Took something off that pitch, stayed a little low and outside. Two balls and no strikes. Jackson leading 10 to 3. There is nobody out here. Armin have a seven run lead. They need a 10 run lead to end this one early. Pitch is down low, ball three. Catcher. Keeps it in front of him. No advance by the runners. Pitch is down low. Oh, I guess that's ball four. I lost count there. It is. They're loaded. Nobody out. Xander Irvin went out with another big opportunity here. Got to walk the last time to score to run. Bases are loaded. Nobody out. Jackson leading 10 to 3. Obviously, if Noah Ernst Called scores on first base and the runners ahead of him do, this game would be over. Right. It would be a mercy run rule victory for the Army. And their third straight in FAC play in the early going. Took something off of it, and it's popped up. The first baseman going over. Does he have a play? Nope. nope. On the other side of the dugout. However, Zerfus is ahead of Irvin, 0 oh and 2. O2 oh, pitch to Irvin from Zerfus. Bounces, gets, gets through away from the catcher, and the run is going to score from third base. That is Ryan Simons. Ryan All scores the, easily as that one goes to the backstop. No the, play on Ryan. The other runners advance as well. Johnson to third, Ernst to second, and now the Ironman lead 11 to three. 
Now within two runs of the Mercy Run Rule victory here in the minimum time that you can get one, five innings. And uh, Urban batting with a one ball, two strike count. Called strike three. That is the first out of the inning. Ramey Wyatt will now bat. What, that is still only one out. They've been throwing at Ramey all night. He's been hit by a pitch twice. Also grounded out. He has driven in a run as he was hit with the bases loaded the last time. Pitch is down low. Catcher no, st stays at his feet, so no advance by the runners. Nolan, right. Nolan Johnson on third. Our men have scored three in this inning. He can get down that base path in a hurry if it gets back to the backstop. Imagine he would be running if it gets away from any distance at all from the catcher. Here's your 1-0 pitch. And that is a deep fly This could be left ball field. game. Left fielder going over. That drops in there. Here, here comes Johnson. Behind him, here comes Ernst, and he is safe. And that's it. The Ironmen win 13-3 on a two-run double by Ramey Wyatt to end it. Give Wyatt two RBIs on that because he was heading into second. They actually threw to second. That's not going to make any difference when uh, the second run that scores is the, is the run that gives you a 10-run lead. So Ernst scores. Johnson scores, and this one ends with the Jackson Ironmen, a 13-3 winner over the Hillsborough Indians as they tack on five runs here to put them away in the fifth inning. Jackson gets their eighth win in this, on the season. They get their third Frontier Athletic Conference win and the third uh, Mercy Rule run win as, as far as in the conference. Their season now has gone to 8-4 and four on the season, and they go and head take the long drive to Hillsboro tomorrow night, and hopefully they can duplicate this effort again. In the inning, by the way, the Ironmen get five runs on four base hits. There was no Hillsboro errors. There was run, one runner left on base. The final score in a mercy run rule victory, it happened in five innings. The Jackson Ironmen 13, the Hillsboro Indians 3. Ironmen go to 8-4 and four on the season, 3-0 and oh in the Frontier Athletic Conference. We will be back to wrap this one up, give you a rundown, and also talk to Coach Josh McGraw. You're listening to Jackson Ironmen Baseball on Fox Sports 1330 AM and 105.3 FM. We'll be back in three minutes. Osborne Equipment Service. Have you been getting a lot of calls from a little boy? Well, yes, we have. That's my son. He always talks about how you have something for everyone. We do if you're looking for truck parts. We have the largest selection in the area. Your son keeps calling us looking for everything. Derek. Yes, Mom. You've got to stop bothering those nice folks at work. But, Mom, I love talking to them. Your diesel specialist since 1979. Osborne Equipment Service in Jackson, Ohio. Call 800-937-3501. And here is the Mona Lisa, painted between 1500 and 1503 by Leonardo da Vinci. This is quite possibly the most recognized painting in the world. Whatever you do, Cliff, stay away from that painting. Ah, don't worry about it. I have everything under control. <laughs> Oops. Some things are easier to fix than others. Thank goodness your car is one of them. If you ever find yourself in an accident, give the professionals at Monroe's Frame and Collision a call and let them get you back on the road in no time. In Jackson, call 288-1313. Start and end your day with McDonald's of Jackson, Wilson, Oak Hill, or MacArthur. Start your day off with a McGriddle. For lunch, how about a Big Mac or Quarter Pounder with cheese? And dinner, enjoy some McNuggets or maybe a great shake and fries. Whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you're always cooking up something great from your Jackson, Wilson, Oak Hill, or MacArthur McDonald's. And I'm loving it. And you will, too. Baby, Ramey's Homes is all the shook up over our low rock bottom prices. One of America's most popular manufactured and modular homes. Ramey's Homes has the largest selection of quality built to manufactured homes in southern Ohio. With the most flexible terms available. Uh, don't be cruel. Hurry to Ramey's Mobile Homes, seven miles west of MacArthur on Route 50. And two miles south of Chillicothe on US 23, baby. And we'll uh, see you there, teddy bear. Have it down to sell house rock. 
to you, Hothead. Build your own burrito or bowl or pick a craft recipe from Leroy's lineup. At Hothead Burritos, we have bold burrito and bowl combinations like the Hawaiian with fresh pineapple, seasoned chicken, and sweet habanero sauce. The Jalapeno Ranch, loaded with tender, meaty steak. And Leroy's Spicy Chicken, featuring our famous Hothead sauce. Burrito or bowl, our craft menu features even more of what you love. More choices, more flavor. It's all yours at Hothead Burritos. Home, it's your sanctuary. It's pajamas at noon and cookies in the oven. It's fingerprints on the wall and heights measured in a doorway. It's the one place in the world that you know better than anyone else. Vinton County National Bank wants to help you build that messy, wonderful, cherished place where you can live a life you love for years to come. That's our promise. VCNB, here for you now, here for your future. Visit vcnbfamily.bank for our construction special. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hello, Osborne Equipment Service. I need to order pizza. We don't have any pizza. Can I get a cheeseburger? We don't have any food. I think you might have the wrong number. You always say you have something for everyone. We do with parts and service for trucks, trailers, buses, and RVs. And we're family owned and operated. We don't do food, but I've got a truck so I could go pick up a pizza if you want. While you're at it, my mom wants a salad. Your diesel specialist since 1979. Osborne Equipment Service in Jackson, Ohio. Call 800-937-3501. Southeast Appalachian Regional Community Health of Ohio is proud to present The Search Project. The Search Project through the Jackson County Health Department is a program designed to decrease the negative impacts of COVID-19 and other public health issues and promote healthy behaviors through the deployment of community health work. The project is funded by CDC and serves 11 counties in southeastern Ohio. For more information, contact the Jackson County Health Department at 740-935-6322. All right, we're back here at Dick Sparky Haller Field where the Ironmen have just completed a Mercy Run Rule victory over a Frontier Athletic Conference rival, the Hillsborough Indians. The final score ends up being 13-3. to Ironmen were able to kick it into high gear with a five-run fifth inning to end this one uh, two innings early. And we're now joined by uh, Jackson head coach Josh McGraw. And uh, Josh, we're 80 degrees plus today, and the Ironmen's bats were just as hot. 12 hits to go along with those 13 runs. You guys were swinging the bats well today. Yeah, they had they had a good day at the plate. Um, you know, I was proud to see that. And, you know, it's good to see you know, this weather. You know, we've been waiting on this for a while. Um, you know, not raining, got a little sunshine. I don't know that we've actually played in the sun much this year. Um, it's always cloudy. But, you know, you know they, they had a good approach today. And we've talked a lot about it. Um, you know, I don't think we're hitting as well as, as a 1 through 9 or 1 through 12. Um, as we as we could, uh, but that's our focus, you know, in pregame and not, you know, in the game, you're trying to get better each game. And today they kind of came out of it a little bit, and we had some guys with big big days at the plate. Right, and you know, uh, of course, when you score 13 runs and and 12 hits in five innings, you know, you're going to get a lot of production up and down. But looking up and down the lineup, coach, uh, every player in the lineup uh, that you started one through nine either had at least a hit or a run or an RBI. So, wow. you, you know, you got contributions from uh, from a lot of players. I had a couple doubles in there as well. Very few strikeouts. You know, you always like to put the bat on the ball. You ran the base as well. Uh, and on the other side, you know, Hillsborough, uh, even though they were 0-9, tried to make a game of it. They had a three-run third inning to get back in it, but your guys uh, kept hacking away uh, on the offensive side. And Tucker Williams, except for that three-run third inning, Ends up throwing a complete game, five innings, ten strikeouts. Yeah, he had he had a great ball game. Um, you know, he was dealing on the mound, um, and he generally always does. Uh, you know, what, that third inning going back there, we had a couple mistakes. You know, that leadoff guy gets on on a strike three. Um, that that normally doesn't happen. You know, and that guy ends up scoring. You know, that's a difference in an inning. You know, if that guy doesn't, you, we just block the ball, throw him out of first base. You. Know, now you probably they probably don't score because you know the momentum's not there things like that and we talk about that and they'll, they'll get better at that and you know no 99.9 percent .9 of the time is perfect um just one pitch right there but he, he'll get better uh but yeah you know it was very very excited and you know i think in in the nine hole easton mcgraw got on base three times um you know that that was big time um out of him you know doesn't have a lot of at bats on the year to you know and that's you know some of these guys they don't play every day you know because we have have some talent so sometimes you're sitting waiting for your turn and when you get it, you, you produce, and he did today. You know, we, we have a saying, we, I don't care how you get on first. You can't steal first. You know, so as long as you're down there, I don't, I don't care. Um, you, you've done your job, and he did a great job there. Um, you know, 
Can't, can't talk enough about Bodie Wolford's defense in right field. Might have saved a couple more runs or, or more. Um, he had a couple big plays out there, you know, today, um, you know, and to help Tucker out. But, you know, Tucker was dealing. Um, he threw a lot of strikes. And, you know, it, it was great. And in the middle of the lineup, I think uh, – how many hits Noah and Nolan combined for? Well, four or five? Yeah, Ernst uh, had a, a couple of hits, uh, scored three runs, drove in one. Uh, Nolan yeah. Johnson scored three runs, drove in three. Uh, Ramey Wyatt, uh, even though he only had one hit, he had the big hit to end the yeah. game, plus had three RBIs. Yep. And uh, Cade Wolford also had three RBIs. And uh, Bodie out there, I want to ask you about that. Of course, your vantage point was different from ours. And he did make both plays. And I thought when the ball was hit and I was watching him react to it, there's no way he's going to make that play. But he did. I, I didn't either. I did not think that ball would be hit that far. You know, that was on the fence. Um, you know, and not only – it really, you know, the speed to make the play, is it's the guts to make the play. Because, you know, there's going to be a split second there where you know you're going to hit the fence. And you know it's not going to feel good. You know, he hit his head on the fence and still made a play. Um, he didn't get hurt, but I'm sure he banged him up a little bit. Uh, but that just takes a, a lot of guts, you know, especially from a young player. Uh, but he's been in the limelight before at other sports, and, you know, we expect a lot out of him, and he always does does well. Um, yeah, it, it, it was, you know, two amazing plays right there. I can't talk – I think I uh, can't talk enough. I mean, Ryan Simons, I believe, had three hits, two bunt base hits. You know, that's been missing a little bit from the top of our lineup. We're getting better. Boston had one tonight. Uh, we had two back-to-back, -back and you, when you get a guy on base and you have a couple bunt hits, now the pressure's on. You know, the pressure's on the defense, and you know, more often times than not, you're looking at two or three runs right there, and, and we did. Um, it, you know, it'd be good to see that again. I don't know, do you, uh, that grass is thick, but do you have glue on it there between third and home? Because I tell you, that ball goes out there, Those and it, were just, perfect. it just dies. Those were just perfect bunts. You know, we try to focus on hitting or bunting with a certain velocity off the bat. You, you don't want to give with it so it dies in the dirt, but you don't want to punch at it either. There's, there's just a, a technique. We actually train, we bunt tennis balls uh, to, to kind of pop off your bat a little bit, and that, that's kind of what we've been working at to get better. Um, hopefully it's working, and probably more than likely they're just getting more reps. That's why it's working. Uh, but yeah, you know, we have, a, we have a beautiful field and with thick grass, and it's not cut long. It's actually cut pretty short, but it is very thick. And But, you know, both teams are playing on the same grass. <laughs> all, all right, and I know, you know, overall, you know, you would have liked to have seen some more runs and hits uh, on some of these games where you came up short. But a, a big offensive game tonight, outside of the fact that maybe, you know, Hillsborough – didn't have the pitching that you faced earlier in the season. Did you see anything with the approach of your hitters that uh, make you feel like uh, things are coming along? I felt like they fought a little better tonight. You know, we talk about fighting at the plate because, you know, not everything's going to go smooth all the time. I felt like we had a pretty big zone, you know, behind the plate, and that, that put, put guys down in the count a lot. And we talked about it for the game. We've, you know, we've had this umpire before, and he does have a big zone, and that can be tough as a hitter. Uh, but some of the guys, they, they just kept fighting it and maybe looking for their pitch early on in account, you know, and when they got it, they didn't miss it. And that, we talk a lot about when you foul a ball straight back, that's actually not a positive, you know, because that's your pitch. You want to put that in play, especially when you, you know, against good pitching. Um, and I, th I thought we did a better job of not hitting foul balls today. It's not as many. Uh, put the ball in play up the middle and, and made a lot of good things happen. Well, yeah, I, I saw this too. I said, tell me if you saw the same thing. First of all, only only three strikeouts. That was a quick look at the scorebook that you had. Yep. And it seemed like to me that the hitters uh, worked the count well and they hit the ball very well with two strikes. Yeah, yeah, that, and that, that was the focus, you know, before the game. You, you can't take, can't take, and you know, you have to spread the zone a little bit. And I thought, you know, especially the meat of the order, the top, you know, four or five guys, they did a very good job of their – um, you know, if not not going down looking. You know, I was proud of that, and you know, just fighting off until they got a pitch they can handle. All right, and of course, as we look at the rest of the week, of course, you face the same Hillsborough team uh, tomorrow night. You'll go to to their place. It's always interesting psychology, psychologically. You know, when you have to play the same team twice uh, twice in a row, and uh, your guys will have to get up to a road game. Uh, yeah. Uh, how do you approach something like that where, you know, you had a fairly easy win tonight and you know you're going to play the same team tomorrow to get the guys up? Um, you, I think the guys, we, we just focus. It's an FAC game. You know, that's your goal to end the year. You can't, you can't let uh, one game slip because a lot of times in the FAC championship, you, one game decides it. And if you take a, you take a loss to somebody you shouldn't, that could, that could be it, you know, because baseball, this league is very tough. Um, and baseball generally, you know, that's just how it works. Um, now, we, we're in a good situation. We got Gavin on the mound tomorrow. He did not play tonight. Um, that was my decision because he, he took a foul ball off the shin the other, uh, Saturday. 
and it is pretty black. He, he, he was ready to go tonight, now, but I just kind of made a decision not to. And I was stressing about it there mid-game, Pete, and not going to lie, because he's our ace. He's one of our best players you know, and be better hitters. Uh, but it, he's so important to us that I felt like a day's, day's rest. You know, he goes out there and throws 100 pitches, you know, on, and lands on that left foot 100 different times. And if he gets banged up, you know, that hurts our chances in the season. So I just kind of decided, you know, that's a hard decision too. I was, I was uh, debating about it for about 24 hours, uh, whether he should play or not. And he wanted to, but I just kind of held him out. But that puts us in a good situation for tomorrow. And that, but that'll, he'll, he'll give us a lot of life on the mound at Hillsborough tomorrow. All right, and I believe if I've got the schedule right, Fairland here on Thursday after that, and then Zane Trace here for a single game on Saturday. Yeah. I don't believe you play on Wednesday or Friday. Is that right? We don't, not this week. What do you know about Fairland and Zane Trace? Not a thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, I know You'll a little bit about out. Zane Trace. Um, they're a very good team. They're actually ranked in the top ten in the state of Ohio in D3. Uh, they are very good uh, in 93 or anything like that, so we end up not playing them a lot. But, you know, every now and then, you know, one will come up here, and then they are, and I'm, I'm excited to play them. Uh, they're traditionally a very good ball club, coach well. Um, so looking forward to playing them, but got to get tomorrow's win. All right, but very good tonight, 13-3 to victory. Third straight win in the FAC. Your slate remains clean there, coach. Congratulations, and we will see you. Good luck tomorrow night, and we will see you Thursday right here. Thank you. All right. That Appreciate was, you, Pete. Yes, that was Coach Josh McGraw talking about uh, his Ironmen's big 13-3 to mercy run rule victory over the Hillsborough Indians. That puts the Ironmen at 8-4 and four overall, 3-0 and oh in the FAC. And, uh, Dan, good, good game tonight all the way around. As you said, everybody in the order got involved in one way, shape, or form. All right. So, for our crew, that includes Hayden Milliken here, uh, kind of behind the scenes handling uh, the production and uh, the video. Uh, Adele I, helps us out with the camera work. Right, Adele wanted to see us be able to do a video along with uh, the regular radio broadcasting, so we want to credit him as well. So for everybody uh, that helped and everybody back at the station, uh, this has been Pete Wilson along with Dan Morrow saying so long, everybody. You've been listening to Jackson High School Ironman Baseball on Fox Sports 105.3 FM at AM 